Fall is just around the corner and I have some fantastic fabrics and patterns lined up for the season. Hello and welcome or welcome back to Sew Pomona. I'm Rebecca and I'm so glad you're here. On this channel, I love talking everything fashion and sewing with a focus on travel and capsule wardrobes. Today, I am excited to share all my fall sewing plans with you. I have some fantastic patterns and fabrics lined up. I'm going to be sewing through my fabric stash first and then purchasing more fabrics later in the season, probably toward winter. Now, I always start the season by planning a digital and then a physical mood board so that I can get inspired with what I wanna sew each season. Now, I usually start with a digital mood board and then I refine that and then I make my physical mood board, which I'm showing here. Watch the season's runway shows. I will look through magazines, um, not just fashion magazines, home decor magazines, sewing magazines, and really get my inspiration up in a physical way so that I can look through and find what I'm really drawn to that season, the silhouettes, the colors, um, what kind of accessories I want to bring in and to really visualize what I want my life to look like. Now, once I make my physical mood board, it is really easy to come up with a color palette. Now you can see by looking at this board that I have a lot of cool, crisp colors. I have whites, um, some pale neutrals, um, tailored basics. I have a lot of highlights of plum and a deep navy, as well as um, some really cool neutral tops. And I found a few pieces that I wanted to bring in a pop of red in. Now, these are things that I don't have in my wardrobe, so that is what I will add into what I already have. Now, you wanna really start this process by looking through what is in your wardrobe. Um, I'm able to sew a little more than I would normally this season because I need a different style of wardrobe than my usual wardrobe. So this is going to be mostly work clothing that I will be sewing in this palette. I'll probably add a few fun pieces in the mix, but that is the basis of my wardrobe. So what I like to do is put imagery up. Um, it helps me come up with the palette I'm interested in. And then I will add um, fabric swatches from my stash to see what's working for the season. And if the fabrics are not working, I will put them away for next season. So let me show you the color palette I chose for fall. You see, I have a lot of violets, so I have a really deep, rich purple. This is black iris. I'm gonna have all these colors linked below in the description. And then I wanted a rich teal green. Um, this is one of my better colors. I love wearing it. I have a silk in this color that, I have a silk cupro in this color that I know is gonna look great for the holidays. Then I have a few richer shades. I have a rich plum and a, I have a rich plum and a magenta color that I think will be a fun, bold pop of color, probably for winter. So those are all in the jewel tones that I'm trying to bring into my wardrobe um, to really pop up, to really add some brightness to my existing wardrobe. Did wanna add a pop of red. This, and maybe not this exact tone, it'll probably be a richer browner red, but you can see that in my mood board. I really liked that. I might add that in as accessories. I don't know if I wanna wear head to toe red, but a little pop of color would be fun. Maybe some jewelry, maybe some shoes, something for a fun accent. Then I am adding a few pale pastels. Now I live in Florida and so I'm mainly inspired by the colors I'm finding in this mood board, but my clothing is going to be seasonally appropriate. So pastels work here in Florida. 
that might not be your style for fall. So I am adding a, a pale, um, I'm adding a nice mauve, a pale lavender, and a pale clear blue to the mix, um, just to add some fun color. Um, I'm not gonna go too dark, it is Florida. I don't wear a lot of dark colors in general. Then we're getting into my neutrals. I found in my mood board, I really liked this top color, uh, earthy Tuscan feel. Uh, so I wanted to add those colors in. So I've got a deeper top, a mid-toned um, beige, and a pale grayish blue. And then a nice dark black as an accent because I really like wearing a dark black as an accent. So usually what I will do is I will pull out my mood board, I will grab my um, Pantone cards, I have um, a few, bo I have a box set that I can go through which really helps me narrow down what colors I'm seeing and then I can just pull those colors from my mood board. Now I like to have a pretty wide color palette for general seasonal sewing unless I'm I like to have a pretty wide color palette for the season because I find I get bored if I stick to a really narrow palette for my sewing. Because I'm going to be sewing the majority in the neutral tones, I can add those brighter pops of color as accent pieces and it will mix and match with my entire wardrobe. So for my fall plans, I'm mainly inspired by the color. I live in Florida. It is going to be hot until at least Christmas, if not into January and February. So our temperatures, even at the lowest, is gonna be 50s and 60s. So I really can't wear those really rich, heavy fabrics. Um, I made a wool jacket last year. I wore it one time. So I like to stick to lighter, airier fabrics that I'm envisioning for the season so I can at least feel like I'm in fall and not in just a never-ending summer. So I focus usually on nice separates, pants, blouses, tank tops, t-shirts, and then a few fun layering pieces in lightweight fabrics. I want things that are breathable and comfortable and if I can, what I try and do is I find like a summer weight wool or I will find a tweed that is a lighter weight because that will work better with my, that will work better with my season and climate. I'm gonna show you some of the fabrics that I have in my stash. I do have a mood board of fabrics I'm thinking about using and all of these will be linked below in the description so that I don't have to go through and tell you the exact name of everything as I go through. If I have time, I will put everything up on the screen so you can see the names of everything. I bought a few fabrics for Mood because I was trying to find a nice, cool, neutral palette that would be work appropriate um, in these colors that I love. So I went with a lot of very neutral shades in different fabrics. So this is a Heather Knit. I will put the name up on the screen. So we are starting out. I'm gonna be looking at my notes so I can tell you these. This is an Italian Heather Top Stretch Viscose Jersey. Um, so this is a four-way stretch with a subtle heathered fabric, and I am thinking maybe a Coppelia Cardi. Um, this does have a really nice stretch and a really nice soft hand. So this will be a nice neutral, um, maybe for some teas. So... The, my main idea was to get a lot of neutrals to mix in with what I already have. So this one is a khaki cupro. This is a khaki solid cupro jersey. Also for mood, this one is a little more lightweight, but it's got a nice drape and a soft hand. And I really did like this color. It's a little, got a little more mauve in it, which I think works for my complexion. This one is soft and has a really nice silk-like drape, which is really nice. Next, I wanted a really creamy white color to make some tops in. Um, 
This is a Ralph Lauren. This is a Ralph Lauren ivory rayon jersey, and it's very soft and lightweight. It's got some nice stretch to it. So I'm, you can see that it's got a nice stretch. So it's very pretty. And I'm thinking maybe some three quarter length sleeve tops um, and a t-shirt. I can probably get two tops out of this. Next, I went a shade darker with this, with this ultra soft rayon jersey in dark top. So this is about a shade or two darker than the other ones. It's got a really smooth, silky hand. I really like this color. So this will be another one for some tops. And I figured with all these neutrals, this will really help um, prolong the life of what's already in my wardrobe because I do have a lot of slacks that I could mix and match these with. And then this linen, I just love the color. This is an Italian atmosphere, medium weight linen woven. It's very lightweight, but I just thought the color was beautiful. And this was the one of the things on my workwear inspired board that I was looking at different colors for what I would like to add in for pants. So if you saw my August makes video, I just did a navy twill pant that's very lightweight. And that was a nice neutral. And I also wanted kind of a grayish um, top colored pant that would be lightweight. Um, that would be lightweight for the heat here, but still look elegant and tailored and really beautiful. All right, and this is a fabric that I've had in my stash for a while. This one is a gingham print from Mood. I've had this for a few years now in my stash. Um, I don't think they sell it anymore, but it's a really nice blue. It's a really nice blue and white gingham, and I might use this as a lining or just as a muslin for one of my other makes. Um, just it is a nice fabric. Now a recent fabric I got is this blue and white tile print. So this one is a British designer dead stock. Um, cotton shirting in a mini tile print that I got from Stone Mountain and Daughter. And I thought this might make a nice dress shirt. Um, the pattern's very tiny, um, but it's really a nice blue and white print, which I do love a good blue and white. And it does have a nice crisp hand. It has a nice crisp hand, a really pretty white selvage. And it's a nice lightweight cotton shirting. If you saw one of my last videos, I was showing the outfit I'm planning on making out of this. I'm going to make a little cardi. This is an Amore Burt Viscose Organic Cotton Scallop Knit in Scallop Knit in Natural Oat. And I'm gonna make a little cardigan and then maybe a little skirt or a dress. I'm not really sure which because I do have a lot of this yardage. And so this is one of my fall projects, a little Cardi in this nice cream color, and that's gonna look really nice with some of those tops. So with that scallop knit, I'm going to use this cream ribbing um, for the accent bands on that. And uh, that, is, that is also from Stone Mountain and Daughter. Then you'll be seeing soon, I'm also going to do a video on sewing with denim. And so I am going to use this beautiful denim. Um, this is an upcycled mid-weight denim um, in cream. It's a 10.5 ounce from Core Fabrics. And I really just wanted a nice cream denim jean. I'm going to make the California jean by Atelier Scamet, which is a French indie sewing pattern company and I'm really excited to make this one up. Now, another fun denim I have in my stash is this turquoise denim. So this was a Japanese denim um, that they had limited yardage of. I got this from Core Fabrics. I just love the color. It's really fun, it's really bold. So I am going to make a jean out of this. Um, it is a narrower width, so I bought a little extra, but it's really a nice weight, and I just thought that color was really fun.
One fabric I've had in my stash for a while is this optic white, um, what is that? This is a high-tech stretch crepe matte hybrid in optic white. That is another mouthful. So this is a really nice crepe. It's a mid-weight and I really wanted a winter white outfit. Um, I love wearing a nice crisp white. I'm not sure what I'm gonna make out of this yet. I am thinking I have a vintage Vogue pattern that's very elegant. This could be really nice in that. Pulling in some of the lavenders. I have this lavender silk. This is a designer dead stock silk charmeuse in lavender from Stowe Mountain and Daughter. Now this has been pre-treated. Um, I buy this stabilizer that's like a starch to stiffen up my silks. Um, before I sew with them, it makes sewing a breeze. I'll put that below in the description if you wanna find out more about that. Um, I learned about this from Pamela's Patterns uh, when she came to ask you to do our talk and this stuff is my very favorite stuff. So this silk will be a fun pop of that lavender color in my wardrobe. And I have this lavender periwinkle knit. This is, I'm not sure what this fabric is. It is a knit. Um, I'm pretty sure it's from Stone Mountain and Daughter, but I really like this color. I think it's really pretty, and I think this will be a fun, another pop of that lavender color. Um, I will put the fabric name up on the screen when I find it. Then I have this micro modal spandex. This is a two by one rib knit in Harbor Blue, which is a really pretty periwinkle lavender blue color. Um, I think this will go really well with the colors in my mood board and I just love this fabric. So I will sew something up in this, just not sure what yet. And here is where I'm bringing that teal color in. This is, this is an Amore Vert Cupro Satin in teal. Um, I just love this color. I've been looking to add some more green teal colors into my wardrobe. Uh, some of those jewel tones, I just think they look really good on me. And um, this will be great for the holiday season. It's, um, it should be easier to sew with than silk, but it's just a really nice, rich color. Right, this one is an organic cotton jersey knit in teal. It's a very light seafoamy teal color. Um, uh, this is from Core Fabrics. They have a bunch of other colors of this. It's a really nice jersey knit. Um, it doesn't have a ton of stretch, but it's very lightweight. You can see not much stretch crosswise, a little more this way sure what I'm going to make out of this, but I do love this color. Um, this is one of my favorite colors to wear. It's very peaceful and um, I just feel very tranquil whenever I wear this color. And I have a lot of this yardage. I recently bought this fabric from Joann's. Um, it's bluer than it looked in the store, which is why I'm not using it. I thought this was more of a gray blue, but when I got it out of the store, it's very blue blue. So this is, this is a pale blue rib knit in Jersey. And so it's very pretty and very soft. So I'm thinking about making some PJs out of this. Um, it's a little bluer than I would wanna wear for everyday wear, but it's really pretty. So um, yeah, I think a little pair of PJs in this will be really cute and uh, very cozy.
Now, if you saw my August makes video, you saw my navy trousers, and I am also going to make a I'm also going to make a suit jacket with this and from another Berta pattern. And so I have extra yardage. Um, I have most of the pieces cut out already. This is my leftover. So I am going to use this to make a beautiful jacket. I'll put the pattern up so that you can see it. But it's really pretty. And I am lining it. And I'm going to line it with this beautiful silk that I got from this beautiful silk that I got locally from Cynthia's Fine Fabrics. Um, this is also pre-treated already. This is my extra, I already have the pattern pieces cut out, so I'll probably make something else out of this too, maybe a blouse. Um, I thought it'd be nice to have a jacket with the lining and then a matching blouse to make a full look. So I'll have the pant, the jacket, and I have enough fabric. I am thinking I had an inspiration piece. I will put it up. Um, it's just a very tailored, um, almost like a vest top with a zipper down the middle, um, kind of like with a peplum. I just thought that it could look really cool with those trousers. So that is the majority of my fabric stash that I'm hoping to sew through in the next few months. And then as later fall, winter comes, I will buy a few more pieces. I really like some sweater knit or rib knit in a navy. Um, maybe something in a boucle. Um, I really like this jacket. That's really on top of my list of things I would like to make. And maybe even a brocade. I really like this jacket. So maybe something textural to add into my solids. So let me show you what I do for my sewing patterns each season. What I do each season is I grab a basket and I organize my patterns for the season. So I have about six or seven bins of sewing patterns that I've collected over the last 15 years. Some of them I'm probably never gonna sew, but a lot of them I have made before. So each season I go through the entire stash and pull out anything that catches my eye that I'm thinking about sewing. So probably half of these are pieces I have made before, like um, Vogue 1914, some vintage patterns, um, the Coppelia Cardi by Paper Cup Patterns, some of my tried and true favorite patterns. And then I add a few new ones in each season. So let me show you some of my favorites that I'm really excited to sew with this season. So first up is this Vogue Attitudes 1467 by Lauren Sarah. This is from 1994, which is when I graduated high school. Um, I really love the shape of this curved front hem. Um, the high collar is beautiful, as is the lower collar. The skirt is gorgeous. I don't think I would wear that though very often, but maybe for a dressier occasion outfit, that could be a really stunning two-piece look. So I am thinking about maybe making this in that optic white. I could think that could be a beautiful winter white two-piece set and very elegant and elevated. Um, another pattern that has been in my stash for a while is Vogue 1671. I think this is the cutest little dress and I feel like this could be a nice fall winter dress. Um, it's not going to be cold here, so I can wear this year round. Um, this has a fitted bodice with shaped bands that I think are really interesting. And I think you can also do this in a ponte, which would be really cool looking. So this is on my list if I find a good fabric or fabrics, because really that's all about having a nice contrast band. Now, one thing I've been seeing a lot of are like 80s style oversized blazers that I think are really cool. And I have this one. This is a great copy patterns. Um, this is the Easy Blazer 870. I think this is from the 80s. One of the women from my ASG group, Judy, gave me this one a few years ago. I've never used it. She does actually have her muslin in here. So I could test the fit, which would be great. And this is just a really simple um, till. This is a really simply constructed blazer. Uh, here's another vintage one I'm interested in sewing. This is a Vogue Paris original. This is Emmanuel Ungaro from 1970, 2177. Now this is a rim, this is a reprint from the vintage pattern shop um, in a size 14, which is a 36 inch bust. And what I love is these come on these nice um, manila papers 
that is full size, so you can just cut it out and go. You don't have to paste anything together, but a really cool jacket dress. Um, I really like the coat, maybe with a slimmer lapel, I might wear that, but a really nice shape. Another new purchase I've made is the Atelier Scamet Patron Femme. This is a little bodysuit pattern that has kind of a gathered waist, a V-neck, a uh, gathered sleeve head, but long sleeve with a cuff. I think this could be really pretty for fall and winter. And I like that it is a bodysuit, so it would stay tucked into a pair of trousers. Now, I have quite a few patterns in my stash. If you wanna see them all, go to my Pinterest board. It is linked below. I have pinned all of these patterns there so that you can see them all and get a good idea of what I'm sewing. And a lot of my patterns, I have a mix of vintage and new patterns, and I will probably buy a few more this season, but maybe later into winter. Once September hits, I really am ready to sew for fall, um, even though my summer clothes still can be worn all year round. I still want a fall mood at least. So that's a little peek into my fall sewing plans. Let me know what pattern interests you or what you're excited to see me sew up. What are you sewing for fall? Are you doing your plans right now? Let me know below in the comments. I have a few fun videos in the works in the next few weeks. Um, and I'm really excited to show you everything I'm sewing. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy sewing.